This week I don't really have a video outside of this because I've had a really rough couple of days. <laughs> more, more than a couple of days, several days. My dizziness has been off the charts, astronomical. <laughs> I do feel like I have maybe turned a corner and I'm coming back down. We'll see. I'm hoping that it will continue to last. I don't really have a video this week. But I did want to put something up, just for my own, for when I'm looking back. Just to acknowledge that it's been really rough this last week. It's gotten to the point where any type of physical exertion sends me into like a really, really horrible, intense, dizzy spell. So that means exercising. I was exercising very regularly for weeks. And I do that because, one, just general health, you know, exercising is good for you. But also it helps with my back problems. It also helps me sleep. It helps my anxiety. But at this point in time, it is not worth it because of how horribly dizzy it makes me. So I am taking some time off from exercising, which is really frustrating. The other thing is looking at screens makes my dizziness way worse, which is great because everything we do is on screens. <laughs> but ser but like actual serious, like that's how I make my money, um, sitting at a computer, writing or um, my Etsy stuff, it's all done on screens. It's fine, like I'm still working, I'm still getting through it. I'm just not spending any extra time on the internet, which is probably, which is fine. I'm, you know, I'm just not scrolling the internet. So I have started to pick up a new hobby. Um, I'm learning, teaching myself how to crochet. <laughs> um, I literally just started today. I did schedule for the vestibular rehab therapy. Thank you for that round of applause. They can't get me in to see them for a couple of weeks, which, you know, that's fine. Used to that. But I have to give it a shot. I, I have to... I have to give it a shot. And who knows, maybe it's exactly what I need. My doctor did prescribe me Meclizine, but anything I've read up on it, I there's just something in me, my intuition telling me to read up on it. And any literature I find is like, you shouldn't take Meclizine long term because your brain like gets, like starts to rely on it or something. And then it's like, it can be a lot worse once you go off of it. And I did take it once and I took it before bed. So I had a whole night's sleep because it did help me sleep, which was nice. But then the entire next day I was very drowsy. I'm just, I'm only gonna keep that for like emergency situations, which hopefully I don't experience. And then a couple of nights ago now, I experienced one of the worst panic attacks I have ever experienced and that was really 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 horrible i went to bed tried to go to bed i'd been feeling kind of anxious but it was when i got into bed is when the panic attack really started and i okay i kind of wanted to talk about this because the way that i feel like panic attacks are portrayed in the media and the way i see other people talk about their experience with panic attack panic attacks doesn't resonate with me like I can't relate to like the way that I experience panic attacks are oh, okay the way that I see them portrayed is that like someone is just like crying hysterically and they're inconsolable and they're like hyperventilating and they are just like completely like having a major very outward panic attack you know like it's all very outward and expressive i don't relate to that when i experience a pan panic attack if someone were to be looking at me i would just look like i was zoned out or in this case it would look like i was sleeping i'm not sleeping i was fully awake but i just i become like frozen like i physically cannot move even an inch like, if there had been a fire in my room or in my house, I would have just burned up. I don't, I don't think I would have been physically able to move. Because in those moments, my panic attack is all happening internally. 
Like there is absolutely nothing happening externally for me. So I don't know. I just, I, I wanted to talk about it because one is just like true to my life, but two, I just, I don't know. I don't know why I, I just, I just wanted it to be out that there are other ways that panic attacks happen for some people. I've never seen someone talk about it the way that I experience it. I'm sure there are. But anyway, so I'm completely frozen, I cannot move. But what's happening is in my brain, my mind is just racing with the most intense, intrusive thoughts, just non-stop uncontrollable like I cannot control a single thought that's going on in my inside my head it's as if I'm like overhearing because it's a lot of what I'm hearing is many I don't want to I mean they are voices they're not like telling me to do things it's not that kind of thing it's like as if I'm overhearing the thoughts of everyone within a 10 mile radius of me like there's just so many thoughts in my head at such an alarming, fast-paced, uncontrollable rate that it's so overwhelming and so unsettling and so, like, just horrifying. And it's not, it doesn't sound like my usual internal monologue. It's like other voices. And sometimes it's not even English. Like, I'm sure that I'm not actually hearing, or I'm not, my brain isn't actually producing, like, actual Chinese or actual Spanish. I think it's just, like, what my brain thinks that Chinese sounds like or what it thinks Spanish sounds like. Those are usually the two languages that I hear. Again, it's not, these voices aren't, like, talking to me. They're not, like, trying to get me to do things. It's not like that. It's as if I'm overhearing other people's thoughts it's like just uncontrollable I cannot get it to stop and this went on for and then so that's happening but then I do also occasionally have my own internal monologue and those thoughts are like of my usual like t catastrophizing anxiety brain where I'm convinced I'm dying or I'm convinced something really horrible is gonna happen, that kind of thing. In this moment, I was convinced I had a brain tumor. I, I probably don't. I mean, there's a good pros like 99% positive I don't have a brain tumor, but in the moment, I'm convinced I do. It was like that for like uh, almost two hours, just completely unable to physically move while my mind is just racing with the most intrusive thoughts then eventually I was able to kind of um fight my way in my brain to get me to start reciting a mantra um and then eventually that little mantra brain got bigger and overrode the intrusive thoughts so then I was able to just focus on the mantra and everything else kind of faded away and then I fell asleep. So anyone who's had like a really intense panic attack, you're familiar with like the hangover effect afterwards. So that's, that happened the next day. Anyway, it's just, it's been a really, really horrible week. My dizziness has been the worst it's been in years. Thankfully, the dizziness is not like, the room's not spinning around me. It's all internal. I am doing my best, but it's just my quality of life is so poor right now. It's, I, you, I can't even, you can't understand unless, like, think about the most dizzy you've ever been. If you've ever been, like, car sick or, I don't know, the most dizzy you've ever been. Now, if, imagine that you feel that way all the time with no reprieve. Like that's how this week has been. And any little physical exertion has made it worse. So I'm, I don't, I have no idea what to do or how to keep going, but I'm just taking it moment by moment, day by day, focusing on the things that I can focus on and Anyway, 
so that's why there's no there's no real video this week because I've just been so incredibly unable to do anything other than the very bare minimum. But I don't want to end this video on negativity, so things I'm grateful for. My friend Sophia, she's been awesome. She's, you know, regularly checks up on me and lets me know what's going on in her life and which gives me a distraction, gives me something else to focus on and I just appreciate her so freaking much. I'm grateful for my mom who is just a warrior and just my biggest rock and support. I'm grateful for cacao being back in my life. It is such a comfort to me. It brings me such, such comfort that every morning I can just, it just, it's such a major, it's such a huge comfort. CBD oil, which is a comfort at nighttime. Unfortunately, it's expensive and I'm almost running out. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm grateful for what I do have of it. Grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for my house plants. I just love looking at them so much. I am grateful for books. I did finish a book recently and I started a new one that takes place at a girls camp and I'm loving it so far. Grateful for this new hobby of mine. I hope that I continue to like it. Yeah, there are things in my life that I'm grateful for that are good and just hope, <laughs> I just hope this dizziness gets figured out. And I really don't wanna keep getting worse. It's been really hard to accept that I am not getting better. <laughs> so I really hope that your week has been good. I really hope that your week has been better than mine. I hope it's so much, so. Be safe, be well, I hope you find ways to enjoy your life, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.